Bitcoin is up almost 5% in the last week. And there's some very important things going on this week that will impact the Bitcoin price as well as the rest of crypto. And I'm going to bring you guys all that information in today's video. How's it going, guys? My name is Cody the Coin Raptor. And in this video, I want to go ahead and go through some important metrics as well as some of my thoughts on the crypto market and what's going to be going on this week. So, first off, before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and smash that like. Definitely appreciate that. And I always love having uh, conversations and discussions. If you guys want to go ahead and leave comments below, I will get back to you on those comments. So, First thing I want to talk about is what's going on tomorrow, and that is the FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee. The FOMC we have here and the Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell's press conference that's going to be happening tomorrow at about 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. This is really important because the Fed right now is projected to raise interest rates by a quarter of a percent. If we go over here to the CME FedWatch tool, what we can see is that for this particular Fed meeting, they're expecting, or 94% of the market is expecting right now that we're going to be getting a, a quarter of a percent increase. And so what that means for the crypto community in the crypto market is that if we actually don't get that, that quarter of a percent increase, that would be uh, bullish. But my own projection for the Fed and specifically for interest rates right now is going to be a quarter of a percent increase followed by a pause, followed by a decrease in the interest rates. And I think that's probably going to be the most likely outcome. And the reason for that is because the Fed right now, they want to raise rates, right, which is particularly, uh, I would say, bad for uh, Bitcoin and for crypto. But if you guys want to go ahead and, and look at the reason that is, I made a whole video on uh, the Fed and specifically raising interest rates and crypto and Bitcoin and how that, how that relationship plays out. Definitely recommend you guys check that out. I'll have it uh, pinned here in the description. But... The reason why I think that the Fed's going to wind up lowering rates by the end of the year is because right now the federal government is spending a tremendous amount of money in interest payments. So as they increase the the amount of uh, the interest rate, the government also has to increase the amount of money paid to these uh, to its debt. So. What we have here right now is that back in Q1 of 2022, you can see that it was spending over $600 billion in uh, in these interest payments. And as soon as, as soon as we go all the way up here to about Q1 of 2023, you can see that that goes all the way up to $900 and almost $30 billion worth of, of interest payments. So this is just a massive number of interest payments, this huge increase as the Fed raises rates. And right now, I do think that the uh, eventually we're going to wind up seeing a, 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 a pullback in the uh, interest rates, and it's going to have to come back down again because, quite frankly, these levels right here that the government's spending on interest payments are just completely, uh, they're just not sustainable at this rate. Okay, because if we actually back this out and look at the max, we can see here that it, it's just there's been no other time in the in the history that this has been tracked all the way back since 1947 that the government has paid this much money so quickly on interest rates uh, uh, on their interest payments. So I do think that there, that something's going to wind up breaking and the Fed's going to have to wind up lowering rates. Either we're going to get a recession or we're going to wind up getting higher uh, unemployment and the Fed's going to have to lower rates. And that is going to be, when they start lowering rates, that is going to be bullish for Bitcoin, and it's going to be bullish for crypto. Another unintended consequence of the Fed raising rates is the massive number of bank stocks that have gotten hit and that are continuing to go down. And in fact, what we have here is uh, stock prices down for PacWest Bank Corp, down 29%, Western Alliance Bank, down 25%, and Metropolitan Bank, down 24%. So we're seeing a dramatic number of bank stocks go down. The traditional banking sector right now has seen an incredibly 
uh, seen incredibly weak as uh, the rest of the market has moved their money from these bank stocks and into Bitcoin. And so what we're seeing right now is Bitcoin actually going up pretty dramatically here from about almost 28,000 to about 28,700. So we're starting to see a huge increase in Bitcoin. And it's very bullish, I think, to see Bitcoin rise as soon as, the, as soon as these bank stocks are actually falling. That's showing that there's some interest in getting out of the traditional financial sector and out of tra traditional banking and instead becoming your own bank. And I think that's very bullish. If we back this out and we take a look at our chart TA for Bitcoin, what we can see right now is that we have strong support down here at about 27,200. I do expect the support will hold for the most part because this support level has held all the way back since March 17th. And this seems to be a lot of buyers in this region. Now, we also have strong resistance here at 29,200. This level um, has been difficult to overcome for Bitcoin in the past, and I expect that it's going to wind up being strong resistance. Uh, and we can probably wind up seeing a, a retest here at this at this level. I think as long as we have some positivity in the market going forward, we can definitely see a retest here of this resistance at 29,200. Now, above that, what you're looking at is the ultimate resistance point of 31,300. This level has not been breached just yet. And in order for it to be breached, we have to see some incredibly strong momentum carry Bitcoin all the way back up again to that level. And I don't think that we're actually going to wind up breaching this level for a little while, at least. For now, it seems like Bitcoin's most likely going to wind up chopping sideways. I would definitely, as always, recommend to pay attention to this support right here, that the bottom support in blue at 27,200, because if this level gives, then the short the short term uptrend for Bitcoin will then be broken. And that is incredibly important to watch this level. And buyers need to defend this level as much as possible in order to ensure that we continue that uptrend. Now, also, I want to go ahead and talk about the funding rate as well. So the funding rate, uh, that's moving basically from uh, are looking at spot prices to derivatives prices. And now with derivatives prices, what we're getting is a strong increase in the number of longs that we're seeing for Bitcoin. And so what that's telling me right now is that going into the FOMC tomorrow, what we're going to wind up seeing is a, a strong reaction from Bitcoin. And right now we're seeing that the longs are betting that FOMC is going to be positive for Bitcoin because now more longs are being taken out for the uh, derivatives market, specifically for the perpetual futures, and they're betting on a bullish outcome for the FOMC. Now, when it comes to Bitcoin and the exchange reserve, I always like to look at this specifically in the last month or so, we've seen the exchange reserve continue to climb. And so what that's meaning right now is that we're seeing continual selling uh, for the Bitcoin uh, for Bitcoin into the exchanges for the last month. And that seems to continue uh, despite some of the, the recent bullish price action, we're seeing a, a large number of Bitcoin flowing into the exchanges and we're seeing people sell uh, their Bitcoin. And that's partially responsible for some of the, the price decrease that we've seen so far. If you overlay this with the price, you can see the price kind of uh, come down a bit and then come up and then come down a bit again. So we're seeing more Bitcoin coming into the exchange uh, at least over the last month. And partially, one of the reasons for that is the miners and miners uh, selling. Now, miners, I've talked about this quite a few times, but miners selling has been a, a huge drawdown on the Bitcoin price right now. It, the reason why the price has been so depressed has largely been because these miners have been selling. But for the last, let's say, about a week or so, it's kind of, it's tapered off quite a bit and it hasn't been quite a sharp uh, decline. So we're starting to see miners just uh, uh, chill out and not sell nearly as much as they have in the last couple of weeks. So hopefully that continues and we wind up getting a, uh, a less selling pressure on the Bitcoin price. So next we have uh, Ethereum. So with Ethereum, what we're looking at right now is that the support level here at 1845 has been completely taken out. 
and I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And now we have support here at about, I would call that about 1800. That's going to be pretty strong support. And then below that level, I would also say at about 17, looks like 1717 or 1720. That level is also going to be strong support. And above that, maybe at about 1760. That's going to be the next lowest uh, support from here. Now, with Ethereum, what you're looking at right now is being able to uh, potentially get above that $2,000 resistance level. There has been a lot of sellers that step in here at this $2,000 resistance level, and, and Ethereum has not spent very much time above this. If we, if we go ahead and take a look at our weekly, we can see that the last time it popped above this level, it got completely sold off. There's a, an, a candle, a weekly candle that is just as large uh, as the... A green candle here uh, as a red candle. And so Ethereum went up 14% one week, and the next week it went down 12%. And we're seeing right now that there's a heavy amount of resistance here above this $2,000. And just like with Bitcoin, in order to get above that level, we need some very strong momentum to carry uh, us much higher, and especially to get rid of all the selling pressure and finally exhaust the sellers. But right now, just like with Bitcoin, I think that we're going to wind up getting some more sideways action. I expect the price to bounce here between 1800 and 2000 at least for the, the next couple of days, if not a week or so. And if this level gets taken out, again, 1800 that would also get rid of the short-term uptrend for Ethereum. So that is the level to watch right now. Now for our Binance coin, Binance coin is a little bit different. Now Binance coin, we have support here at 13, at about $316. This level has not been taken out just yet. And I would say that the short-term uptrend for Binance coin is still intact as well. What you're looking at right now is resistance at 340 to be taken out. And just like with Bitcoin and Ethereum, you're going to need some incredibly high volatility, incredibly high volume in order to push above these levels. So one last thing I want to talk about is the fact that with the FOMC, we could wind up getting a bullish pump after the FOMC, depending upon what Jerome Powell says. So we could actually wind up getting a big move in the Bitcoin price after that happens. As investors, as a traders, digest the information that's coming out from the uh, FOMC and specifically their decision and then what Jerome Powell says on the press conference. So we could actually wind up making a run here at that, uh, that $29,000 uh, resistance level if it comes in bullish, if the if this, if it's interpreted as bullish, and if the Fed specifically talks about uh, stopping rate hikes, and especially if they mention possibly even cutting rates, okay, so that's going to be what to look out for this week. And the only other thing that uh, could potentially impact the Bitcoin price would be uh, Apple, which is going to be reporting earnings on uh, later this week specifically on the 4th of May. They're going to be reporting earnings, the last big tech company to report earnings, and that could potentially move uh, the NASDAQ and subsequently the Bitcoin price as well. That's all I've got for you guys today. If you guys like this content, let me know. Like, subscribe, and go ahead and leave a comment and let me know what you guys think about the FOMC and what you expect Jerome Powell to say or you think he's going to be bullish or bearish or if you think that we're going to wind up getting a pump afterwards or we're going to get a sell-off. Definitely interested in hearing about that. And go ahead and make sure you follow my Twitter for the most up-to-date information. This is Cody the Coin Raptor, and I hope to catch you guys in the next video.